Hi, everybody. Welcome to the QB School. I am JT O'Sullivan. Today, Brock Purdy dealing versus the Cowboys Sunday Night Football. Fired up for this one. Let's get it going. Welcome to the QB School. <laughs> So before we dive into the video, a quick reminder about the Quarterback School Patreon community. This group is the foundation, the bedrock of this channel. Not only is it a great, cheap way to support the channel, but you get even more Quarterback School content. So if you enjoy the way that I talk, teach, and analyze ball, you will love the Quarterback School Patreon community. Hop over there, join, become a member. I appreciate your support. As for this video, let's get into it. Brock Purdy, the 49ers, Kyle Shanahan, this offense, putting the league on notice. Brock Purdy is just dealing all sorts of confidence, poise, accuracy, anticipation, so much to love. And then you tether it to great scheme, popping wide, guys wide open, especially in the underneath coverage element of the league. You just don't see space like this very often. So what is this? This is that use of that Dolphins fast out motion you see everywhere all across damn near every level of football. So what that does creates all sorts of stress here on the back end, second and third levels of this defense that then creates this huge void as you come in here and just settle. Just peek the kind of separation that this thing has all about 10 yards away from the ball. You just don't see it for damn near any other team. So quick motion. And then again, when he catches that thing, there's no one around him for five plus yards. It's just outstanding offensive architecture and design. And it's a combination of stealing and using your strengths and the decisiveness of Brock Purdy. But man, that is just a thing of beauty. Love to see it. And again, the decisiveness. Check the base out from 13. Boom. Ball out quickly on him. Easy completion. Let's go. Next one here. Touchdown pass. Brock Purdy to Kittle. Again, this to me is the separator for what Brock Purdy has brought to this offense that we maybe haven't seen from other guys. The ability to extend and create down the field consistently. So nothing there immediately. We move. We don't move to run. We move to throw. And that is a beautiful job of creating. Love to see 85 get a touchdown. If you know, you know. In addition, okay, at the top of your drop here, I've been critical of this drop back scheme for a while now. And I think I've provided evidence about why perhaps it's dated compared to other elements of this. But his ability to not panic, to extend out here, and let this thing just run away is what Brock Purdy brings to the table. But I also want to recognize when I see things that look like drop back things getting better, this right here, essentially these two players out here like this as they switch into this, the element that I love here is this number two with 15. He's running like a little double move. They run so many returns or loops out of this that when you see the guy run up and then he hits the brakes and then he goes into a double move, that to me is innovation in the drop back game. I love seeing stuff like that. So not only can Brock Purdy make plays like this, but then you combine it with that little nuance from the number two up top, 15. Watch him go in uh -uh, and go. Now it's not there, but those little details I think will continue to shine as they create more winners in the drop back game. But man, Brock Purdy outside the pocket, creating a special group of perimeter players, creating space down the field, making good decisions. Again, super decisive. Uh, get out and go. Eyes downfield. Too easy. Next one here, third and one, beautiful call. Nice execution from Purdy to use check here on the little slide or sneak flat back this way. Again, third and one, great short yardage call, little buddy ball, OC to fullback style. There's lots here to like. Obviously, the 49ers have been the cream of the crop at doing these kind of move the launch point, slide naked, naked keeper games forever. Love the ability, the trust in Purdy to call these on third and short. Outstanding. The other thing here I love, and I know I joke about 44 being buddies with the OC, but watch 44 here, how smart he is. He's got the shift. Okay, He's shifting back across to the wing. He's going to go before Purdy even tells him. So he's going to go here, and then Purdy kicks him with the foot. Like, oh, yeah, you're supposed to go. He's the f very rare to see the fullback ahead of the quarterback. Yeah. The dude's a smart guy. I get it. There's lots of reasons to like him. He's got a special skill set. Third and one, naked keeper, pop on the slide. It's just outstanding. I mean, when these guys are locked in and dealing like this, it is going to be real hard for anybody in the league to stop them. And watch the ball handling from Purdy here 
offhand, on his core, polished, come out with a plan, worst case scenario, someone in your face, no one there, right on the flat, number one, first down, let's go. Next one here, first and long, we're going to get a miss down here to the bottom to Ayuk. So we get the shift, use check, motion, McCaffrey. We're going to throw what I'm going to call like a nod glance, and the ball's just behind him. And at first glance, you'll say, pun intended there, you'll say, man, that's a poor throw, right? It's behind him. You know, it's got a chance versus middle field close to be a big hitter here. We've got great design. You know, our feet are a little all over the place. But when you look at this thing from the wide and you slow it down, and I know I say this on this channel, but I don't think it resonates with everyone. There are different types of misses. When you play with this kind of anticipation, so at the bottom of the screen, the quarterback, is he's patted the ball right there. Purdy's already throwing it. Okay, and This is a really good look at what I'm going to consider some iteration of closed here. So middle field closed. We've got what I'm going to call some iteration of a post. Okay, now, maybe you don't love the little nod element of it. I probably don't. But this is this route. You can see here, Ayuk is still running this way, right? So we're playing with great anticipation, literally world-class anticipation in my opinion. So when you play with this kind of anticipation and you're throwing before guys are going to be open, you're going to have some unbelievable throws when you put it exactly where you want. And if you're not right on the same page, things will look like spray misses. And this to me is one of those spray misses. I have no problem with this. I mean, again, watch the little nod at the top of the route. You know, I don't think you have to do that. You've got him beat if you can just stride out and go. But that little nod turn signal, I mean, if anything, it makes the throw closer, if I'm being honest. But man, I love the anticipation. Separate right there. So he's already separated to throw it. You can see he's looked off that middle field player. He's on outside that ups, upstairs, upstairs, the far side hash. Nod, the ball's halfway in the air. He's still not looking, not looking, not looking, not looking. Now he looks, ball's a little behind him. So again, it's worth pulling apart the, the film for me and saying, what kind of misses, even when he does have misses, what is it? It's driving the ball down the field a little bit, and it's tethered to anticipation. You can't be that mad at these. Not every throw is going to be perfect, but the idea that he can play with this kind of anticipation, with this few amount of starts in the league, it's as good as anybody with anticipation. And if you're a fan of the channel, you know how much I love how Tua operates and plays with anticipation. It's just the throw is a tick off. That's close to being a really, really special throw. Next one here, another touchdown pass to Kittle. Love it. He's going to shift. And then this is a reverse flea flicker. So we're handed to the back, flip it to the wide receiver, flip it back, get Kittle going on the wheel down the sideline. Outstanding finish from Kittle here as well, making sure he gets into the end zone. If you know, you know, just a absolutely world-class design. The thing I love is changing the launch point. So it's not like true flea flicker. Reverse pass back to the quarterback. Beautiful ball. Again, not missing layups. Pretty so good at those intermediate throws. Just a thing of beauty. So again, the design shift. So we're going to come out here on what I'm going to call. The reason I call it a reverse is because anytime you hand it to the back. So we're going to hand it to the back here. Hand it to him. The back's going to keep going. He's then going to hand it to the wide receiver. That, to me, is a reverse in just my language and I think how most universal football. So here's the reverse element of it. For Purdy, though, he's going to get this thing back on the flea flicker element, changing the launch point. So oftentimes, one of the hardest things about flea flicker is that it happens in the pocket and you've got all sorts of issues holding up for forever if it's not a great run fake. But when you change the launch point, it then allows Kittle to sell this edge, block, 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 and then boom, hit it up the wheel. And number two just can't sort it out. So just so many little details here about why this place works, why this play works. And I think it works mostly because it changes the launch point. So move the launch point, got it. And Kittle does a great job as well. If you just watch Kittle, the timing of this thing, how he holds up on the edge, 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 go. And then the throw is perfectly weighted right on him. Great finish as well. Just so many things. When they're dialing up with this kind of creativity on specialty plays, taking shots and hitting them and having them pop wide open with the ball handling, handoff, flip, flip. I mean, it's going to be hard for anybody to handle this offense 
with these kind of weapons and this kind of play calling. Next one here, another beautiful anticipation throw down here to the slot to Ayuk. This is a route combination I don't know if I've ever seen before as far as a post in like crossing this late down the field. But the anticipation, again, is simply world class. It really is. And the trust and the kind of the relationship between the wide receiver 11 and 13 here, as good as anybody in the league, love Purdy's base lined up to his left. But just peek this route concept to get started here. The number one is going to run what I'm just going to call a post. And now you see post in a lot. I think a lot of people would refer to that as like mills. But what you don't see is kind of post and then like deep down the field, deeper down the field, intermediate in like this. Like that's a pretty unique thing. And watch what it does here to the DB type. He's going to then try to turn and run like he's turning and running this way. And then we're able to come back and throw this ball with great anticipation. I mean, <laughs> good luck. Really, I mean, it, it is one of those things where it's just kind of like making sense of all of it. It's pretty awesome. Get the motion going. Again, drop back, improved right here scheme-wise. Look at the space it creates. Watch one run and turn. He's turned to run right there, right? He's terrified Ayuk is going downfield. Switch release, switch it again, and it's with anticipation. I mean, it's pretty awesome. Let me go back one more time and just show the anticipation because I didn't stop it. He pops right there. I mean, look at Ayuk at the bottom of the screen. He's not into the break yet. Tap right there. You know, if anything, I'm going to guess that that's an in route and Ayuk should be coming flatter and it's probably a better ball if he runs right down the 35 as opposed to like bananaing that thing in. You know what I mean? As if you're going to respond. Just tighten up the top of that route probably and it's an even better ball. But man, Brock Purdy, watch his base as we get pulled and camered here. Just always seemingly lined up. There's no wasted movement. The lower half here is just boom, perfect. All his cleats in the ground, lined up to his target. It's just a thing of beauty. I love it. However, if I'm going to be honest, and I'm going to try to be consistent with the criticism, every for every one that I love with the dropback stuff, there's stuff like this where it just doesn't make sense. Now, I'm not saying they can't build something off of this type of shift or this type of location. And they get, in my opinion, fortunate right here with the penalty and the late hit, putting 23 in a rough spot here with what I'm going to guess is a choice route. I just don't know why you do it from this depth. It None of it makes sense. So I'm going to pause it after the shift. So watch McCaffrey shift. Okay, now I think you could make an argument that I could wrap my mind around if this was a motion, and I'll show that next. But sh like shuffle, 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 stop. So now we're static. Okay, why wouldn't you be here closer to the line of scrimmage? No, that doesn't make sense to me. The only reason you would want to do that is to motion shift and then have something where we're either like doing like a double pass or we're coming back across in another motion. So they have to be setting something up because if it's just the shift and then we're going to ask him to run a route on third and four, it doesn't make sense. If he if he was lined up at the line of scrimmage, this 10-yard choice is now a six-yard choice, and he's under control to just come in here, and you can put it right on him. So this to me, so when you say, man, you're always critical of the drop back, stuff like this is what I'm talking about. So we go shift, static, five yards deep. Then we go short motion. And it sure looks like Brock Purdy is working this side first, and then he just kind of is used to this security blanket of McCaffrey winning on stuff like this. And right here, he he doesn't, and they get a little fortunate with the penalty, in my opinion. So just running from this depth doesn't make sense to me. It's almost like two middle fingers, like, we can do it, so we're going to do it. And right here, they you know not only is he taking a big shot, but you have to get a little fortunate with a flag and kind of a, put that defender in a tough spot as far as what the hell he's going to do and where he's going to strike him. So no to the right, switch back, you know, semi-blind-ish. But if he was running like a normal choice, he'd be running an in route to the number one versus kind of a slant to six. And I mean, that's a big shot. I'm trying to protect two, three. Halftime, you dig the channel and you haven't already, please like, subscribe, hit the bell, get the notifications, let it wash over you. An easy, simple way to support the channel. I sincerely appreciate you subscribing to the channel. So thank you for doing that. 
Again, the Quarterback School Patreon community, you know about it. Join, become a member. In addition, we have Quarterback School courses. Now, these courses are by far the premium, most in-depth, detailed content offered through the channel. If you love the way that I talk and teach ball, you will love the courses. The courses go deep, deep dives in my favorite football topics, RPOs, pass protection, tempos, how to beat every coverage is the best selling course. And we even have an entire offensive system available for you. So if you're interested in any and all of those things, hop over there. The link is in the video description and enroll. We also have a bunch of free resources available. Check them all out linked in the video description. Finally, make sure to follow me across social media platforms. I appreciate your support. As for this video, Let's get back to it. Next one here, right on cue. This is that same shift, except now in, instead of a shift, it's a motion. And it's Debo in the backfield. And I mean, it's really an unfair matchup. So this is a perfect example of what, you know, the personnel of the 49ers can do when you put a wide receiver in the running back slot. You got him running essentially a Texas or a choice on a linebacker. And, you know, most times I would say that would end up being a touchdown. So now instead of a shift, it's a motion, right? They snap it on the move. Okay, furthermore, it's a fast four motion. Well, I should say it's a slow, it's a shuffle four motion. So this idea being that we're getting four eligibles out to this side, right? We got four guys that can be potential receivers, can catch a ball. We're going to go high, low here to the post, shuffle, shuffle. Here's that little Texas or angle route. And then we're going to run that classic kind of Niners return or loop here. So if this kind of high, low isn't there, so however you want to read this, one, high, low, two back here to this little loop return and it's just a great job it is great scheming to say hey at the end of the day we're going to shuffle shuffle and get a linebacker type on our wide receiver i mean that is scheming people up the league is a matchup league if they're going to prefer alignment versus matchup then the 49ers are going to be eaten all day because there's no chance great job from purdy putting it right on him on the body on the break and again, normally I'd bet a lot of money that 19 would finish that in the end zone. He's about as good as anybody with the ball in his hands when he's going towards the end zone. Boom. Tough. Next one here, 22 personnel. We're going to start in three by one nub, eventually get to two by two, and eventually get to three by one and throw the backside glance down here to Ayuk. Again, world-class anticipation. Better ball, great touch right over the linebacker's fingertips. And this really should be a massive play. 21 doing a nice job clicking the ankle there on the tackle or else this thing probably turns into punt return right. Again, watch Purdy's eyes, head after the shift in motion. Look to the right. Boom. Back to the left. You know, not really true glance because, I, you know, I think usually this three no hitch. But you got to appreciate the design. First of all, the personnel. 22 personnel. Then we're going to shift, motion, and then watch the route at the bottom. So last time, remember, he missed it when Ayuk nodded. This time, clean. Boom. Right? And there's no unnecessary wasted movement. Three, hitch, throw, anticipation. He's already throwing it. Look at Ayuk. He's not into that post yet. Falls halfway to him. Again, right over the fingertips of the backer or the second level of the defense. It is world-class anticipation and accuracy. Y'all, there are maybe a handful of other quarterbacks in the league doing this. You can shake out you know, your rankings any way you want. You show me 10 guys that make this throw in the league, I don't believe you. Look at that thing. I mean, where is it? Right on his throat. This is just an absolute masterpiece. Beautiful touch, great accuracy, anticipation. They are rolling. Next one here, third and four. Ayuk down here to the bottom. He's going to run what I'm going to call like a sharp corner, the number one, with a little loop of return by the number two. And this, is, again, is just simply world-class accuracy from Brock Purdy. It's a nice route. It's a big-time play. Ayuk, no doubt, I love their connection. But this throw is outstanding. And, again, it's not quite on time. He's got to buy just a tick of time. Got to move just a little bit right there. You can see his base perfect on the reset, and that is an absolute seed it is a thing of beauty and again this little combination you see i think the 49ers run more than anybody else and when you're creating this much space it's just a thing of beauty so up and then this kind of like tight corner it's even probably a tighter angle than that tight corner paired with what i'm used to calling this return or loop so if it's not there you come just high to low but 
This thing is a dot, y'all. It's right on his line. And you pair it with him having to move and like reset his base. It's beautiful, man. It really is. Great job. Look at that throw right on the money, and it turns into a big chunk. The accuracy leads to the yak. So again, watch the footwork here because he kind of has to move right off the launch point, but he resets his base perfectly. So back foot right here. Got to move. Boom. Look at that base right into it just exactly how he normally operates. Boom. All his cleats in the ground, ripping it. And so, I mean, just that subtle little, you know, top of the drop movement to reset and drop an absolute seed. My goodness. Next one here, third and 14, just an absolute strike down here to the bottom to Debo running dagger versus Tampa two. The mic's going to run with the clear post. And this is just what Debo does after he gets the ball in his hands. It's a beautiful throw, nice anticipation, great accuracy. You know, love a good in right down the middle of the field, right up on his throat. I mean, just making it look like it's easy. He's so precise, Brock Purdy, with these throws that it looks like they're handoffs. So coverage-wise, what's going on? Here's that split field safety, right? So some iteration of middle field open. When the Mike linebacker runs through to the middle third, Tampa 2, we're gonna then going to run with that clear, and that Mike is really going to attach to him and run, and it's going to create this huge void in the middle of the field. So we've got this big void in the middle of the field, and here comes the dagger element paired with it. So once you see that mic run, you know you've got it, and it's a great job from Purdy recognizing it, putting it exactly where you're supposed to. Great call, third and 14, double chip, able to buy enough time to do that. Look at the pass protection, beautiful throw, dart, and the yak. I mean, y'all, converting third and 14s this easily, this offense is as dangerous as anyone in the league. I mean, look at that pass protection. You know, leave the all pro with the one-on-one. -on -one. And I mean, that is a strike right up on his face. And wide receivers jumping, not for me, but that's a beautiful job there. Catch it, run, accelerate. Look at the acceleration. That's awesome. Another touchdown pass here. Another great third down call. Again, 22 personnel. Love the design here of the switch nod post. Brock Purdy thrown with unbelievable anticipation in the red area. Great block from McCaffrey as well on this power pass. But I mean, y'all, that's so easy. And again, if you know, you know, my guy 85 eating, I love to see it. This play, though, is really just an iteration of post over. You know, it's a little bit funky when you run it with power pass. Power pass to me is bluff flat, and that's always the number one. And then the running back usually comes and chops the guy who we bluffed at the edge. And the rest of the offensive line is full sliding away. Well, right here, they run essentially what I'm used to calling a switch release. So he's going to go first and run that inside post or over. We're going to get Kittle here on the outside release, let him go. Then he's going to come up and nod like he's going to go to the corner, right? Because we talked about power pass. It's usually tethered to a corner. So we nod to the corner and then we come back and go to the post. If that's not there, you've then got the crosser coming across. And again, great block from McCaffrey here. But y'all, you, you can deny it if you want. But this anticipation is world class. He lets this thing go well before Kittles to the post. Just let it wash over you. You know, if you can't watch this and smile and just enjoy great quarterback play, you're not giving yourself a chance to really appreciate this. Look at the, th I mean, he's throwing it right there. Kittle's nodding to the left. He's throwing it. He's already well separated. Look at this touch. Ooh, I mean, I'll let it play full speed for you just because it's cool to see the switch release as well. But man, the timing of this switch, nod, touch, high back five, high-ish, middle five. It's a hell of a job, man. This is world-class design again. Off the play action look, great block. Let's go. Next one here, third and two. Another beautifully schemed up play here. We're going to go from three by one to two by two to three by two. And it's too much for the fighting Al Harris's on the back end. They've got no chance. And in reality, you've got multiple first down opportunity throws. Purdy just takes the easier one who's more wide open down the field on the deep corner or out. There's just so many moving parts. 
So shift. Watch 55 try to get him set up. Shift. Three by two. They're essentially rushing five, playing man on the backside except for 55. Wide open on the corner. It's beautiful. It really is. I mean, this just one of those things where you're essentially just having fun on offense when you can pop guys this wide open on third and short. Two shifts, get to three by two. What is this play? This play to me is we're trying to get the ball right here versus man coverage. We want this little like he comes out and again runs this little like loop return, but it's really like a rub. And we're trying to get the ball right here on this kind of like now flat, now shallow type thing. That's kind of the man rub play. And then it's paired with this kind of deep outer corner. And this thing just pops. I mean, you know, if it's contested everywhere, I think this place probably gets the ball here to the number one. But it's so wide open. I mean, it's just, you know, the DBs on the backside can't sort it out. The line, you got a linebacker trying to cover a corner or safety trying to cover a corner from 15 yards off. They look confused, way too much space. But again, you know, if it's tight coverage, you could put it on Debo down here as the number one, too, right there. Third and two. But he sees that corner about to come open. He sees those DBs low. And that's just way too easy. <laughs> It's beautiful vision from Brock Purdy. Another element of his game that I don't think gets talked about enough, not only is it the precision, the accuracy, the anticipation, but the vision to see these types of things, to not force the one that's there underneath that, yeah, you could maybe get a first down contested, but the corner's wide ass open. Again, look at his feet lined up exactly where he's throwing it. I mean, polished at the back end, all his cleats in the ground, ripping it deep outside the numbers. Outstanding. Last one here, Purdy's fourth touchdown pass, a little power pass to the bottom of the screen. Use check bluff into the flat, dropped, you know, just totally unraveling on the back end for Dallas. But a great job from Purdy here, continuing, not stopping, just feeling that pressure and finding a wide open 44. It's a great job. This is a play that every team in the league runs. Some iteration of we're here, we're bluffing the edge defender, and we're into the flat. Again, the back will come flying off this fake and try to chop the outside leg of the C-gap defender. It's almost always paired with a corner and like a back line over. And you just read this thing, one to two to three. Now, the thing that I love that Purdy does, and I think this is just naturally him doing it, is post-fake, he doesn't stop here. He keeps drifting because we've got some issues and leakage through the front. So he's athletic enough to make these types of like, you know, just buy a little bit of time, make the easy play look easy. Don't miss a layup. Four touchdown passes. Sunday night football. Have yourself a night, man. Dude is spinning it. So good. Great job. Great scheme. What a win. So that is a wrap. Brock Purdy, the Niners rolling. I mean, Brock Purdy just continues to impress, really. And when you think about the amount that he's played, and just how this has happened and where he's at and how consistent he's able to play with what I would call world-class anticipation, the accuracy on the intermediate stuff, how decisive and poised he is. And you combine that with his ability to create and just kind of extend things and have a great feel for what they're trying to do offensively with those weapons and with this scheme. Y'all, right now, look borderline unstoppable you would think at some point they're going to have a difficult game and we'll see what that looks like when it happens but man you have to celebrate the level of quarterback play that brock purdy is playing with right now just simply magnificent so much fun to watch thank you for hanging to the end i will see you next time have a good one